Uh, this is uh, JP from uh, New England Cop Chases, or just Cop Chases. We uh, took the New England name out uh, a couple weeks ago to uh, go national. So uh, I want to touch on a couple things. Um, yeah, I'm going to say, um, deal with it. Um, this is a lawsuit filed um, against a hate group in town. I don't know if you all know, I've been being chased and hunted down by a couple of hate groups. This past summer, I dealt with um, the Fraternal Order of the Blue Line, Blue Lives Matter, and the uh, various other hate groups. Uh, um, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy weird in New Hampshire because there's like a multiple groups of activists that do various different things and they do this on their own and I've been kind of collectivized in general to be part of these particularly the free state that's why you hear a lot of my videos I'm not a free state not a free state because a lot of the law enforcement have a persona um, that uh, attaches themselves to the free staters in fact I have a video coming soon that's going to be available in an interview with a detective on an arrest I had back in back in the summer. But anyways, I want to I want to point out how far police supporters will go to target someone when they know they're in the wrong. Um, in this case, this uh, this is an ex parte order filed, um, which I won by the way. Um, and I'll give you the case number. It's Hillsborough Superior Court, Southern District, 213-2018-CV-00070. It's Matt Phillips, JP, versus 8th Circuit Court, Family Division Keene, Administrative Office of Courts, and a, and a hate group called Stop Free Keene. Um, this stems from a bunch of these idiots going to a family hearing. Let's see if I can actually get the layout of it to see, uh, if I can actually read it open. Um, if I can actually open the stupid thing. My PDFs have been really, really strange lately. Um, after I downloaded an update on uh, Windows 10. I'm not as computer sav savvy as most, but I'll read what I can from the order. And I, see, I still I still can't see it. Um, this sucks. Because the way it came out, well, I gave you the, I gave you the the thing anyway. Anyways, these people showed up at a family hearing, which was a final hearing. Um, in New Hampshire, they don't have, they, they do not have custody here in New Hampshire. They have parenting time and parental responsibility and residential responsibility. It's kind of like a general way of politically handling the emotional stress of custody. Um, so they don't have custody here. The law is both parents get 50-50 custody. Unless there is a, 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 a legitimate concern, and according to the law, the other party only has to produce clear and convinc convincing evidence, not reasonable doubt. So, you know, it's just basically who the judge believes and who he doesn't believe um, with the stories of retaliatory behavior going between two parents. And this was a three-year fight. Um, I have full custody, not because of anything that came out of the hearing. It's because, you know, the other parent made uh, a couple mistakes, and I'm not about to trash or expose uh, my um, my kid's mom um, on this. Um, um, um. So here we go. Um, Stop freaking came to a family hearing, and the judge ordered it to be closed. And the contents of this hearing and the testimony that I gave to be uh, closed and sealed. And now that's a general and, and open order. Um, 
so ordered, that means it can't be changed. Um, it can't be open or anything because it was like 13 years of of uh, medical history, diagnoses, medications and stuff. I got a bad bump on my head um, back in 2005. Um, I got hurt really bad. Um, the contents of that I'm not about to share because I won't get into get into that. But I had a head injury. Um, I have a traumatic brain injury and it took a while to uh, recover. The reason why I have so much energy all the time at my age and I don't look nowhere near 43 um, is because of this head injury. It's, it ended up being more than a gift than, than um, an ailment. So in retrospect to that, the judge granted my order for it to be sealed because it, you know, it followed confidentiality rights and, and the law agreed. Well, in error, the 8th District Court Keene um, gave these idiots a, the sealed copy, an unredacted copy to the CD. Um, and in this CD had a lot of private information in it and they plastered it all over their uh, website. Well, they got in trouble for it. I've sued them and they were found at fault for violating the law. Um, and this three page thing, I can't really see it. I don't know if you guys can see, but it came out very blurry. But I gave you the case number. Um, it's Phillips versus Stoffrey Keen in Family Division Keen Administrative Order. These people have been going after a local group called Free Keen that, that was founded by Ian Freeman, formerly known as Ian Bernard, who runs Free Talk Live, which is an uh, internationally known radio, online radio personality and podcast. Um, I've been on the show a few times. Ian, Ian is a friend of mine. Um, it's more like an activism brother because we've bumped heads too. Um, but mo for the most part, we, uh, we get along and we still do some stuff together. I was there two weeks ago. Um, no, just chilling out. But anyways, I spoke at uh, Keen Invention uh, with, a free, you know, with a lot of people from the Free State Project. A few years ago and the year before that, I believe it was before the Pumpkin Fest riots of Keene. That was the last year I think we had it. I'm not sure. Um, that's basically how and when all this stuff started going on. Well, this hate group started targeting me furiously. Their page is filled with all kinds of hate, spiel, and they followed me. They they, they have followed me to my kids my kids' school. They've made uh, false complaints with the police department. They've called DCYF multiple times. Um, and and the, the list goes on and on. They were in trouble for uh, doctoring a false birth certificate a couple of years ago. And they were made to take it down or charges were going to be pressed. But the 8th District Court, um, I mean the 8th District Court King was in trouble too. And there's an ongoing lawsuit um, active and I'd be represented in that case as we speak. And that, that's about to drop very, very soon. But I want to touch on not the facts of these, but more of the lines of how fanatic these cop lovers are and how far are they willing to go to target people um, for the sake of their loved ones. And I want to share with you that they have a different look at what cops are. I cannot find the video, but there was this judge that read off something like 172. I tried to find it right before I got on, but I just I want to make it quick. Um, she read 172 letters of recommendation after convicting this cop of beating the living daylights out of a young black man. I think he was 13 years old. I think it was in like North Carolina or something. And she pointed out something extremely, extremely important. These letters said he started a boxing club for needy kids. He volunteered at the food pantry weekly. 
during Thanksgiving and Christmas, he gave away free toys, turkey. They, him and his wife even cooked at the food pantry. The food pantry. So it's like one of those things where um, they have a different look at these cops. A totally different look at these police officers. Let's see if I can get the story here. Um, got the story here. Let's read it. It says, This man has been a mogul and pillar of his community for 16 years on the force. Yet, he beat up a 12-year-old black kid to the point where he put him into the hospital all because the young black man didn't want to show his ID. And that's where the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is these supporters, what they see and what is on the street on our videos are two different people. And that's the thing. Do they have split personalities? Do they carry their anger from their home out onto the street and take it out with not being impartial? with extreme bias, extreme prejudice, violating pretty much every right that you have when they are in fact underneath you. They take an oath. That oath says they're under the jurisdiction of the public. And they are subject to, to extreme, extreme scrutiny. When will it stop? When more people watch them. That's when it will stop. Now, Keen, these guys are like, I mean, from the rest of the country, I can like almost get face to face with these guys and literally say, F you, right to their face, like the full word. Um, I have children present, so I don't want to swear. Um, so that's basically it. These guys have been watched by the Free Staters, watched by Free Keen watched by the Free State Project and other activists like Robin Hood of Keene, um, Keene Cop Lock, Keene Peaceful Streets, you know, groups like that for seven, eight years now. And I've been plugging at it for about five, at least, pretty much every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And one of the biggest things, my pet peeves, is the open container thing because these guys... This is a college town. These guys make $32,000 a month just in fines alone going after these college kids because they know, and, and it's funny, they, they write these tickets and charge these guys with underage just before vacation. So they know they set the, uh, they set the court dates up during the vacation. So if they don't show up the court date, they have to pay the fine. And most of these kids live in Connecticut, Maine, uh, Rhode Island, Vermont. So they're not going to come back for the court date. They, of course, they're just going to pay it. They're not going to appeal it, no matter if it's bogus or not. So that leads that leads to the question of of you know uh, quotas. They don't have quotas. They're banned and illegal in New Hampshire. But there's other things like the A. The A C E A L A, which is the a the Achillea, they call it uh, accreditation process, where if they write the most tickets to get the most DUI stops, they get like this grant from the A C E A L A. In fact, some of these uh, police departments put the sticker, and they get rated by stars, and the sticker will have like two gold stars, three gold stars, four gold stars, whatever they ranked that year. For the accreditation so that in itself is uh promoting a quota um and that's how they get around you know the the, the quoting law so here we go with the the whole you know family thing um i got pulled we got pulled over a couple years ago by trooper Mer Mer merrill it's called Let's see if i can find the video uh, so I could give uh, the people on here uh, a description. We got pulled over, and this guy was lying about seeing a blue and a red and blue light. I don't know. Many of my fans probably know exactly what I'm talking about because it's just a bogus call. 
Um, it, it's the stupid, the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And then when he couldn't get his way um, around me, because I wouldn't even let his mouth open about the blue and red light. He said he pulled us over for swerving. Or rather, he said he pulled up to swerving, and then he made up the blue and red light thing. Well, anyways, to make a long story short, his wife actually got in touch with us on the, uh, the comment section, which was uh, pretty bizarre. I thought it was bizarre, um, to say the least, because I've never been approached by, you know, an immediate family member. Um, but if you guys don't know, when you file a complaint on a police officer or a public official in New Hampshire, it's illegal for them to retaliate. It's actually a law here in New Hampshire. They can't retaliate in any way. They can't be biased in any way. Or they can get in, in pretty serious trouble. And that's even through third party. But I actually commended the lady because it's his, you know, she only sees the husband part of what he does she doesn't see the lying sack of shit that he is when he's pulling people over for no reason and lying through his teeth when he does that. And how come I can't find this video? I like literally scrolled through like 27 videos here and I cannot find it. Oh, here it is. It, uh, the description is state cop lies to justify a stop on popular cop lockers because at the time we're part of New Hampshire regional cop lock. Um, which we are no longer a part of. Um, and uh, it basically, uh, it, it's crazy how this cop was just totally lying about uh, why he stopped us. It's uh, absolutely ridiculous. Super, 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 super ridiculous. Sorry about the ad. <laughs> I tried to skip this, but... So this is the cop. He's coming up to the car. And uh, I don't know if you can hear it. Hi, my name is Trooper Merrill, State Police. Hey, the reason I stopped you is firstly, uh, you're waving a bit. Secondly, actually, we have, we have, ca we have cameras. Would you let me talk? Okay. No, I'm not going to because I'm telling you you're wrong. See, I stopped him right there. Now he's thinking there's a safety issue and he actually made us get out of the car. They the uh, two troopers actually patted us down. This was a few years ago, um, and the uh, the video has like 51,000 views, which which is a lot for us because we we localized all our attention in New England and New Hampshire alone, and and that's pretty big for you know a somewhat small state. Now that we're going national, we're we're hoping that that gets a lot bigger um, when we put uh, put more videos out. But basically, he lied. He basically said he stopped up for swerving, and then he lied about seeing a red and blue light, which we don't have a clue what the hell he's talking about there. And we had a wraparound four way camera, didn't show us swerving at all. So we filed the complaint. The complaint was founded that, uh, with the evidence that we had, that he basically um, was coming up with ways to profile us for DUI checks. And he had no idea we're out there watching him, and watching the the police at the time. So that that's basically one example of um, a family member or supporters. Now back in the summer, I think it was uh, the end of summer actually, where I got our page, our Facebook page, got bombarded by the fraternal order of the Blue Line and Blue Lives Matter. I mean, riddled. And I guess they went on what they call a complaining flood, where they just con kept complaining about little posts and posts and stuff. So all our admins were getting flagged and then banned for three days and then banned for five days and then banned. And then finally, like, every admin, including myself, were banned. So I filed, like, this huge complaint. I even ca tried calling. I sent letters. And finally, they figured it, figured it out it was... Uh, what they call complaint harassment and um, they don't really tolerate that they say but after I did that it came to a complete halt because that website was promoting harassment this police website was promoting harassment which is an infringement on free speech 
they are subject to public scrutiny. Media is not. So let's get that straight. We could say whatever we want, including lying about shit, because lying is free speech. Unless you're trying to defraud somebody for money, hurting them physically in some way, or lying to get funds from somebody in a fraudulent manner. But saying I'm here, my name is Mickey Mouse, is not a crime, and it's, it's labeled free speech. So, you know, all that can just get put to rest right now. So here we go with the with this these whole attacks and why I'm going through I was going through that with with the court because these these cop supporters that go after activists have nothing else to do. I mean, they don't and and, it, and their profession has the highest divorce rate, the highest domestic violence rate according to the FBI um, the FBI, some list came out like a year ago and, and rated the domestic violence. It was like on CNN and, you know, Fox News and all that shit. I, I'm not about linking, but I'm about, I'm about talking. So just deal with, oh, I want to see links. I want to see that because people, people are like obsessed with information on the internet, even though like 98.9% .9 of it's bullshit. I experience this on the street, head head on. And that's how you gain truth, is when you see it for yourself, you go out and find it, and you do it, hitting the ground running. And then uh, you get targeted. And some of these activists, they, I think there used to be 50, part of Free Keen, um, and part of the Free State Project in the Keen area, there might be six now. Free Talk Live is booming. Um, even after some, you know, downfalls a couple years ago, I know their their Bitcoin and their 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 cryptocurrency um, push is is going huge. There's a few more people moving to the area, but as far as active activism, I haven't really seen any in about four years. They keep moving away because, you know, when they get arrested, they fold and. They whine, whine like little babies and they go running. I mean, I didn't run when I got arrested and they, they chumped up a charge. I filed a complaint on a Detective Aaron Brown of the Manchester Police Department. You know, two months later, I'm cop watching and cop chasing out in Rochester, New Hampshire, and I got arrested on a warrant. Found out the warrant was for filing a complaint on a cop. They're trying to, they, they're trying to charge me with filing a false complaint, false swearing, for filing a complaint on a cop. Well, guess what? New Hampshire vs. Allard, New Hampshire Supreme Court ruling, says even if I lied about a complaint, it's still allowable under free speech and a right to complain on a public official in protest. Because we have a right to protest. And if we're protesting in any manner whatsoever, even if it is lying, it's allowable. But I actually am not lying. He did push me. He bumped me twice. And that's exactly what I said. It was a light push or shove. And he had no right to put his hands on me. And if you want to know that video, it's Detective Douche Brown. I believe that's the label of that one. And uh, that's basically uh, that story. And, and, and I got a backlash on that with supporters from Manchester. I got overloaded with with comments and and uh, you know say get a job and they always throw that out they they assume that because we're out there th three hours a month is what I put into it really um, I mean you can watch a movie in three hours I mean one of Lord of the Rings is just shy of that so you know I get I guess watching a movie means they they don't have a job right if you see him at like KFC somewhere they must not have jobs because, you know, they're out enjoying. And my pastime happens to be watching police because police need to be accountable. They need to be watched at all times with extreme scrutiny and with extreme prejudice. So the second update I want to give you guys um, um, is uh, this New Hampshire Liquor Commission form that I got in the mail. I filed a multi-complaint. Multi 
The video is labeled Cop Chaser Chases Off a Whole Task Force of Undercovers. It's got about 3,000 something views and it was posted about five months ago. It was just when summer was ending. Um, and I was pissed off because none of the cops undercovers for the Liquor Commission were sharing their name. If you don't know, Liquor Commission is um, attached to the, to, to the New Hampshire State Police. Um, they are a division of the State Police. It's actually headed up by, by Commissioner Armageddon, who's a former trooper. Well, still is a trooper now that he's a commissioner. But this is the letter I got. It says, right to no request, keen detail on Friday, September 8th through Saturday, September 9th. Because uh, it went past 12 o'clock into the next, the early morning the next day. This letter is a partial response to the right to know request, which is called the 91A here in New Hampshire. Liquor Commission, or NHLC, received from you on Friday, October 13, 2017, the following information regarding the NHLC's Division of Enforcement Officers is provided in the table below in response to your request for a list of the officers' identification and length of service. They actually gave it pretty quickly, and I had a long conversation with Armageddon, um, and my complaint was founded. They are most certainly, under policy, required by law even, to answer and be responsive when they are asked, who are you? They need to tell you who they are. They were mocked cops wearing vests that said police, and again, that video is cop chases, Chases off a whole task force of undercovers. If you just put cop chases, chases off a whole task force on my uh, YouTube channel, cop chases, it will probably just pop up. But I wanted to read you the cops' names. One was Lieutenant James Young, 18 years of service. Sergeant Matthew Elliott, 9 years. Investigator Danielle Elliston, 9 years. Investigator Glenn Bullock, 6 years. Investigator Nicholas Cutting, three years. We got a newbie. We got a rookie on the force. Investigator Ben Williams, one year. Investigator Christopher Paquette, ten years. And Investigator Kyle Willett, nine months. And NHLC continues to gather information pertinent to the to the re re remainder of your request regarding the the night of Friday, September 8, 2017, through early September 9, 2017, NHLC anticipates it will, a response before Thursday, February 15, 2017. Should more time be required, the NHLC will let you know prior to the date given above. Well, February 15 is my daughter's birthday, which was yesterday. Um, it's about five o'clock now because I do I do morning podcasts good morning to the state um, so the legal counsel for them is Rosemary Wyatt and I got this from Chief Mark C Armageddon who's the director of Liquor Commission Liquor Commission like these undercover cops that go around that check fake IDs they follow college kids around for open containers underage drinking though even illegally pose as a college kid and actually go into into these houses which is illegal which I straightened out with the the New Hampshire uh, Justice Department um, they should not be doing that without a warrant um, and they go into the bars and they actually find the bars themselves and restaurants uh, for serving alcohol and they also uh, serve fines on restaurants and bars that don't check for IDs because I guess that's required too. They need to check it and they can't take any fake IDs. So I guess it's up to the, the owner of the restaurant if someone else illegally falsifies their drinking age. Even though a 17 and a half year old can shoot a five pound shell out of a Abrams tank or drive a striker or serve on an aircraft carrier, they can't drink. Uh, I'm not a big fan of alcohol. I never drank a day in my life. I never smoked green even though um, I'm an advocate for legalization of marijuana. I, I personally never done it. But alcohol is a much, much, much worse and deteriorating drug um, that ruins a lot, a lot of lives and destroys people. Um, 
when people don't handle it correctly. And I'll just keep my opinion. I, I'm a little biased in that area because I have a lot of family past when it comes to alcohol and I'm not a big fan. There could be better things. I mean, if my family smoked a lot of weed, it'd probably be a lot less hurtful towards one another. <laughs> you know, pizza and weed, they should do it. Um, even though I've never done it. So the second one I want to um, point out is the Nashua cop one. I have a Nashua cop where it was a, a black female officer that failed to identify herself. And the reason why I'm showing these is because I was accused of not filing complaints on my videos, which is just bullshit. So this is another one. This is Nashua, Nashua Police Department. It's uh, addressed to me. March 29th. 2017 by Chief Andrew Lavoy. This letter is in response to your contact with the Natural Police Officer Department regarding the complaint you filed concerning one of our officers, Sergeant Lakeisha Phelps. Captain Joseph Fay was assigned to investigate your complaint. I have reviewed the facts and circumstances regarding your allegations as follows. I have concluded that the allegation that Sergeant Phelps did not properly identify herself at your request is sustained, meaning it's founded. I disagree about the Article 8 of the New Hampshire Constitution mandates this identification. However, National Police Policy on Conduct towards the Police mandates that officers will supply their name or badge number upon request. That's actually a, um, a rule of training and standards, not just the police. But the 8th article of the New Hampshire State Constitution most certainly does require them to answer all questions and be responsive and open at all times. And I filed a complaint on that, and that was also sustained. So he shouldn't be quoting on his view as, as a duty officer of what he feels the interpretation of the 8th article of the New Hampshire State Constitution is. It just requires them, any magistrate officer or sworn officer to be open at all times, responsive, and accountable to the public at all times. Um, so that just backs up that. And this is the My Frame Cops app. They think they can get away with what they want, they do what they want, and this is one of the things I keep telling some of the free state of friends that I have here in town they're like, well, the law, the law says they have to do blah, 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 blah. Listen, listen, I'll put this out right now. Cops don't give a flying shit what the law is. That's why 79 people have been shot unarmed since January. It's a reason why 4,986 people unarmed have been killed the past two years. There's a reason why 82,000 people have been brutalized for no reason at all, but just merely speaking their voice in protest. We have a right to protest even in the midst of a detainment, even in the midst of an arrest. Period. So all you blue line cop suckers and bootlickers and, and nooblets can uh, read Texas verse Hill, Glick verse Conniff, and, and see what your law says. Your justices unanimously already decided that we can tell a cop to go F himself even in the midst of an arrest without any retaliatory action coming from them. Listen, they will beat the crap out of you if you tell them your rights, period. Okay? They will plant stuff inside your car if you're a dick to them. They will lie on police reports just to get a leg over you because these cops thrive on power. Okay? They thrive on power and they do not care whether your rights are violated or not. Period. So let's get this straight. The only thing that cuts through all this is putting a camera in their goddamn face. Put a camera in their face, constantly watch them when you see them, and that will deter them from doing anything illegal or bad. And the things that are caught on camera that are bad, they didn't even know or didn't even realize they were being recorded or forgot they were being recorded. But when they know, 
you just might save someone's life. Not only life, but career. Fathers with kids going to jail for no reason. Hundreds of stories a day. Hundreds. These police officers, they might be good people during the week and, and post up and be like this mogul of the community or pillar of the community. But trust me, you start yelling at them in protest, they're going to punch the shit out of you. They're going to smash your head into the ground. And they're going to say you're resisting just for moving your mouth. Period. That's why I tell the people that cop chase with me, do not bait. And I told this to cop blockers in the past because I see videos all the time. They unscrew light bulbs in their, in their car. They knock a, you know, a tail light out just so they can get a reaction. Listen, baiting might get you killed. Okay? It gives them a chance to pull you over and plant something. And then your life is destroyed, ruined, or whatever. They, they will do it. And look what Manchester police is, th thinks they're doing to me. What they don't realize is there's a $1.2 million lawsuit going to be dropped down on their heads for false arrest, violating my right to protest, violating, violating my right to record. They did it with Chris Waite, too. The, uh, the co-host, one of the co-hosts of Free Talk Live of FTL on the LRN FM network. You know, they did it to him. He's part of cop chases. And keen cop lock. And they did it to him. They arrested him just for merely having a camera. So it doesn't matter what the law is. Stop quoting the goddamn law. Because they don't care. They don't care what the law is. What you do is pick up a camera and watch them always. You see blue lights, turn your phone on. Take pictures. Take notes. Get witnesses. Stop doing the same crap that they do to you when they try to incriminate you, even if you're not doing anything wrong. I was talking to somebody that was supporting the, supporting the idea of police the other day. And then he was telling me he got pulled over one day and he says he was sweating. He goes, I had my hands on the top of the steering wheel. I was, I'm like, hold on, why did you have your hands on the top of the steering wheel? Well, I wanted to keep my hands in plain sight just so they wouldn't get nervy. I'm like, why would you get nervy? You just said they're peaceful people just doing their jobs. Why are you scared? And you're freaking supporting them. You shouldn't have to feel afraid when you get a cop pulling you over. You should feel safe, right? Well, I'm leaving with that note. Was, I just want you guys to think about that for a minute. Why are you nervous when they're behind you? Even if you've never been beat up before. You've never been pulled over or had any bad police reaction whatsoever. Why are you afraid when they're behind you? Because you know, you've seen and know deep down inside your heart and in your mind that they are freaking nut jobs from the 5th and 10th level with demons inside of them. They beat wives, they beat kids, they racially profile people, and they infringe on your rights on the daily basis. According to the Constitution, they're not even supposed to be pulling you over. Your car, your street, your property, they don't even have a right to govern your property in any shape, means, or form. You know, back in the day when they started giving people licenses and registrations, they should have went batshit crazy. But they, they masked it and said, oh, it's to track the census and how many cars are on the road so we can keep up with road structures and bridges and da 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 now, it'd be, now it's a profiling tracking tool for, for law enforcement and not only that we don't even have regular law enforcement anymore if you take Manchester SWAT team and put them next to tier 1 operators SEAL Team 6 or J a bunch of JSOC guys they look identical and guess what clear violation of Posse Comitatus Act. There cannot be a military force that goes against the people in public right here, right here in the states on solid ground in the United States of America. It shouldn't happen and it cannot happen and people need to wake the hell up. Seriously, you can't even drive down the road without getting stopped for no reason. They'll just make up a reason. Oh, you didn't come through a complete stop. Where was the stop? There's no stop sign around. Well, you did anyway. That's where these guys are.
So I'm going to end on this note. Hope you had a, uh, an awesome Valentine's Day. And all you single people out there like myself, keep being single. <laughs> uh, take care of your kids. And uh, be safe. And watch the cops. And good morning to the state. Peace.